as we listen to, to it today, would violate the Commerce Clause. Because uh, under Sporhazy versus Nebraska, uh, you can't hoard water. So if you had a standard that was discriminating on its face against uh, out-of-town transportation of water and, and produced a severe burden, aside from showing simple need, and so this is an anti-waste But isn't, isn't water, on the issue of the Constitution, isn't water a pretty valuable asset of the state? That's what they argued in Sporhazy. And, Spo and the Supreme Court in Sporhazy, S-P-O-R-H-A-S-E, said you can't discriminate. You can't hoard your natural resources. Well, you can't discriminate against the fact that it's whether it's a local company or an outside company, but you sure can take many, many steps to preserve your resource. You can take certain steps to, as long as they are even-handed and you do not discriminate against the transportation of an item in interstate commerce, such as water. And, and I, you know, we didn't raise a Commerce Clause claim below because we won, and we had no standing to do so. But these real constitutional problems that would come from a more severe burden show that another reason to defer to the state agency in its interpretation. But even if the issue here is um, uh, loss of competitive capacity, in fact, what you have argued, or maybe I've got this wrong, so correct me if I misunderstand it, what you have argued is a loss of a market share. You are not arguing that there will be lost profits if you're not able to transport this water. What you're arguing is that because the market is increasing, you will lose an opportunity to make greater profits and thereby keep up the market share. Is that the same thing? Well, the testimony uh, that Mr. Griswold has chosen to produce, the written materials, it indicated not only that we would be unable to meet our projected demand, but we can't meet existing demand. So, but they talked about things like, as the population increases in these towns where there are bottling facilities, they, uh, they have a greater demand for the water. And therefore, they, there is less water that is available because we maintain sustainability and prioritize the local needs. And therefore, there's less water available for us at all the, the Shouldn't that be a red flag to the town of Denmark? Well, that that's these what places that are that are allowing the um, these uh, wholesale bottlers to take water out of their uh, of their ground is uh, reducing the the availability of the water for the residents. Well, it's the opposite. It's reducing the availability of the water for Poland Spring because we stop when the greater uh, need comes for the domestic uses. So the town of Denmark can take great comfort in the action levels that they've set and the conditions that they've imposed. So you're saying you're stopping in other towns? Yes. Okay, which, we, which one? Poland Spring um, uh, and, and the, uh, the other places where we have our bottling facilities, the record shows the testimony from the, the written testimony that's in front of you is from the manager of the natural resources, Mr. Tom Brennan, who, who filed materials showing at these sites, because that's the criteria for the statute, where, where the water's getting transported, we, we have insufficient capacity. What that means is, not just to meet the growing demand, but because we have permitting levels, and that he says this, the testimony shows the, the permitting levels, we have to stop, and that means we need more sources, which we will always respect. Doesn't, doesn't it also, this gets back to Justice Clifford's point, it demonstrates that, that this is a finite resource. This is not an endless resource. And if the resource is finite, and if it is now being, uh, it has arrived at the point where you've got to look to the town of Denmark to start pumping out multiple uh, gallons and increasing capacity, why should we accept an argument that a loss of market share is enough to show a substantial hardship that allows your client to continue to truck water out of the state. What the, the record shows as to the, the finite nature of this resource is that the level that Poland Spring is seeking to take out of the town of Denmark is fully uh, rechargeable and sustainable. It is not going to lower the amount that is available for the town of Denmark. Should the town of Denmark have an increased need locally for that water, then yes, Poland Spring will look to other sources 
to get, meet its existing and projected demands. And the, the state, as Justice Clifford has noted, has indicated here is the standard. But aren't you working on a, an upside down pyramid as you, as you extract more water and take it away, local towns then begin to uh, lose their water capacity. So you move to the next town and you create in the market a greater desire for bottled water elsewhere, which means that this finite and fairly precious natural resource in Maine begins to be the source for a greater and greater demand nationally. If your capacity to say market share gets you substantial hardship, it is endless. The, the, the amounts that are taken from the, the town of Denmark do not decrease the total amount that is available in the town of Denmark. And it's that's being monitored on Absolutely. a daily, I mean on a regular basis? Yes. 